would like to thank the following sponsors and partners. The views and opinions expressed in the following program are those of the hosts, guests and producers. They do not necessarily reflect the policies and position of this channel. Viewer discretion is advised. Hello everyone. Hello mga kaganap. Welcome back to our digital tandem with John and Ben. We have another exciting episode because we have a lovely guest from London, UK. She is... Best Reality TV Actress, Best Host, Best Female Presenter, Female Role Model of the Year, Winner of Best Reality TV Personality, Most Inspirational Women, Star Award Winner for Extraordinary Women, Best Charity Supporter, and a lot more. Yes, our favorite destination now is London. <laughs> and we're so happy to have our guest for tonight, the gorgeous and beautiful Ms. Deborah J. Kelly. <laughs> Welcome to the show. the show Ms. welcome on Ganap TV hi Miss Deborah can you introduce yourself thank you. thank you so much what a lovely introduction <laughs> and uh, thank you to Bench and thank you to John it's an honor um, to speak to you this evening um, and a real pleasure so yes I'm Deborah J Kelly um, I've been in the industry for a long time probably too long to mention um, because it gives my age away. Um, but yes, I am um, a fashion presenter, a red carpet host, an author. Um, I, I've done quite a lot in my life, actually. But anyway, it's great to speak to you. We're so honored that you grace our show here in Ganap TV in the Philippines. Yeah. 
And uh, we are excited to know a, uh, a lot of things about you because you are also doing a lot. So let's start. <laughs> yeah. So, Miss Deborah, so what keeps you, my first question is, so what keeps you busy during the pandemic? Very good question, Bench, because it's been such a difficult time for all of us. And it's something which I think no one ever thought was going to happen. You know, it was almost something out of a fiction movie, which we watched, but it became our reality. And it's been, I mean, I haven't been able to be physically on a stage since before last March, which was when, of course, they announced, you know, that COVID was out and about, uh, and, you know, there were different lockdown measures. So it's been very difficult. The fashion industry, of course, the fashion designers, the photographers, everybody involved in that. Um, and of course, everybody in life. I mean, we've all had to adapt um, to things that are different. You know, I'm speaking to you now, and it's amazing because I'm speaking to you and you're in the Philippines, I'm in the UK. And so technology is, is, has allowed us to be able to keep doing what we need to do in terms of working um, and fashion, but it's all gone virtual for obvious reasons because we can't meet each other. Um, but I think, you know, it's been such, a, such an incredibly difficult time. And during that period of time, I wanted to stay positive and to um, try to bring about something where we could safely get together. As you know, it's very difficult. They change the lockdown measures all the time. So, you know, sometimes six people can meet in an um, outdoor location and then only two people and it's changed. And I've tried to embrace that and to bring people that I've worked with for, well, I've been in the industry since I was 17, I'm 54 now. Um, so it's, it's something that I feel um, very, very sort of, I have a compassion about it. And so I managed to do some shoots, uh, theme shoots, where I brought together um, lots of models, presenters, uh, designers, photographers, and I did it in COVID um, or, or in, in accordance with COVID restrictions, um, which was very difficult. But I wanted to do something really positive um, that could come out of fashion during lockdown. Uh, and that very much was uh, Model Diaries UK. Um, it's been commissioned for seven part series. Um, I've just launched the first one. It went to number one uh, bestseller uh, in the first week. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm really proud of the success of it, but I'm also proud that I was able to bring together, um, you know, people who, who again, haven't been able to do anything. You know, they've been stuck in their houses as have I since more or less last year. And, you know, you sort of tend to forget who you are. So I wanted to bring everybody together um, just to remember you know, that inspiration that we had on the stage. Exactly. So the pandemic doesn't stop you from doing what you want. And I think you were able to push it to the limits, right? So I think that would be a nice advocacy at this time that you can still um, work, you know, um, despite of we're all locked down in our own places but we were able to come up with our own ideas and creativity and innovations. So it doesn't stop us. If once you're a creative person, it will come out in you, right? So um, I, wanna, I want to know like um, Deborah, so um, like you have wrote seven books. I think you have published seven books and you said that it has been successfully launched. Now, do you have any other plans of um, doing more books in the future and, and, and what are those books that you are you came up about? Very good question. Thank you, Don. Um, I was I always wrote books, um, sometimes under pseudonyms. 
and it was a natural progression for me. I had I have a beauty school. It was launched in 2003 and it's on the television quite a lot. So they've always taken an interest in us because as I say, I've been on in television really since I was 17. So I've got a lot of contacts. And from that, I just bought, I just literally, I thought, right, I'm going to write some educational uh, books. And I published them, I self-published them um, on Amazon. Oh, so most and of your books, yeah, so most of your books are online, are available on Amazon? Is it right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So they, they really go in line with the courses that we do. So they are the educational manual that a student would, would have um, to know everything that they need to, need to know about a course. And... From there, I wrote another two books that they're waiting to be published, actually. It's, um, it's a completely different subject, actually. It's about cryptocurrency fraud um, and the whole kind of dating, um, you know, the dating apps now. Uh, so much fraudulent activity. Something completely different, but, you know, very newsworthy. Uh, and, and, you know, that's where I am. That's where I sit. So my past was journalism um, and not in fashion you know I came into fashion a lot later in my life so yeah so I mean the model diaries I was kind of thinking about it for I don't know maybe a year or so and then when lockdown happened I thought well there's no excuse I have no reason not to sit down and write a book because I can't do anything else um, so that's when I decided to actually launch the model diaries and I think it was the perfect time to actually launch it because it talks about COVID, it talks about racial uh, prejudice and how we are embracing culture and, and that's what I wanted to make the statement about you know there was riots there was so much going on last year you know here and so I wanted to bring everybody together to say you know there's a lot of negative media for some reason, media like to be negative, but I want to be positive. I want to put positive media out there, right? Just, yeah. I mean, do people want to? I'm sure they want to hear positive things. Okay, so yeah. <laughs> um, that's that's so nice, no? Mm -hmm. Now, um, you mentioned a while ago that you um, came up with your fashion on the late latter years of your life so how come that you get interested Discover. in fashion yeah modeling mm -hmm. I, I think pageant also pageant yeah. you've been yeah. also into pageant right <laughs> <laughs> and how come that you only uh do it on the latter years of your life rather than you know while you're it's still too, young yeah, it's not too late <laughs> <laughs> nothing is too late yet yeah <laughs> i'm just curious you know like uh some started very young but you you just you know had that passion only found out this time that's a good question i i was cut to the chase for where where I am in the industry so thank you so much for that um, growing up I I really was always in uh in the kind of forefront of things so you know when I was eight I was in a jazz band um and I appeared quite a lot on lots of shows that you won't you won't know but we had this iconic show um back in the 80s called Top of the Pops um and you know I was in that um, and I appeared in so many different things. I, we had some competitions. They were quite big ones at the time, talent competitions. And I won them. Um, so I've always been used to walking on a stage in front of everybody. Um, it doesn't mean I don't get nervous, but I don't know. It's a strange thing to explain. It's almost like I feel at home. And I feel yeah. like I'm in front of a family. Uh, when when I talk to them, I, I want to relate to every single person that is standing there. So anyway, so I did 
you know, quite a lot of modeling, but I was a very driven journalist. I launched lots of national magazines, international like TV stations. I was responsible for so many, I can't even, you know, it's too many to mention. But then I got uh, ill actually and um, very sick and I was covered in a rash. They never knew what it was. It was terrible. I used to have to bandage myself. And so I think from 30s to 40s, I wrote off my whole dream of being, it wasn't necessarily modeling. It was just being out there and communicating with people and relating to people and speaking, you know. And so, so yeah, so I felt like I, I was making up for lost time because at the age of about 42, 43, um, I started to get better. And I realized that um, so much of my dreams had been put to the background because of the illness. And then I thought, do you know what, now um, I'm gonna do it. And I thought, well, am I too old? Because I really made my name. Um, you know, it takes a long time in the industry to make your name. I mean, I've been out there since I was 17. And, but with the advent of social media, there was never social media before. So people that now are on social media have no idea how long I've been in the industry. And that's quite important to say because we didn't have the publicity that we have now. Um, but I was doing things for a long time. So I really, I think maybe that my success came late 40s, early 50s. Um, and because of that, obviously, I want to promote older women on the catwalk, on the stage. And we are limited, you know, even now, you get lots of different possibilities, but they all want women that say are under 30. Um, and I don't know why, you know, I want to, I want to change that. I want to challenge that. And the Model Diaries was part of that challenge. It, it encouraged women and men of every age, every culture, every creed, integrating together um, to, to, to tell their stories. And that's what I wanted to do. My main focus, number one, is cultural integration. You know, we all have the same heart. We all have the same soul. You know, that's what defines us. It's nothing about our color. You know, it, it, so that's sort of where my passion is. And my passion also is for women and for men to still feel like they are wonderful human beings when they hit 50 because lots of people feel forgotten then you know they've they've spent their whole lives bringing up children they've been a wife they've been a father they've been a grandfather they've been a you know all of these things and you know all of a sudden you hit your 50s and you think oh all my children have left home now yeah you know, who am i you know what what didn't i do when i was younger that i now want to do so that's where I stand in the industry. I really love it. Very good. Yeah. <laughs> Very yeah, well said. Yeah, because when you get yeah, when you get older, it doesn't mean that you you have to stop everything. So it means there's still things to do when you reach the age of 50, 60. Yeah, just like you, Miss Deborah, you can still do the fashion modeling, pageant. So, because, uh, you know, uh, when you reach like uh, 30 or 40, it's that's the time that you were focused on your, like your kids, your family. So, you know. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I, yeah. I won a pageant. I mean, I've not really been into pageants. You know, I was a real kind of, my background was journalism. And, you know, I had this very kind of, route that I was following to do with journalism that didn't include beauty pageants um, and I'm actually um, the uh, Miss Classic Wow um, which I won at 54 and then I won another one before at 50 um, but what made me sort of change that was to try to make a statement in the industry 
And in order to make that statement, I had to achieve. So I can't say, look, you know, women of 50 are beautiful. That is a statement. But to actually win a pageant, then you're saying, look, you know, here we are. People are still being identified. They're still being crowned. And, you know, they can still be a beauty queen, whatever age they happen to be. I mean, there's an iconic model who I love. Um, I won't name her, but she's 80. And she does a lot for Vogue and she's still on the catwalk. She's 80 years old. And she teaches a lot of things to younger women about her experience and her knowledge. And this is what's important about older women. You know, we can be, you know, we can be really good guides for younger women that are inspiring, you know, to, to, to become or to go into the industry. Yeah, I think we should uh, be thankful on the, uh, on the WOW pageant, the organizer that, you know, giving the platform for the, you know, older women and men to join in this pageant so that there is a, a way where they can showcase that despite that underage, they can still capable of um, uh, doing something that is more, um, what, what I mean here is more productive, more um, intellectual because they're more experienced, right? Yeah, it's, as I say, I mean, I think, I think I've come across this a lot in the industry. You know, it is about age. It's about age and it's about the, the size that you are. You know, are you really skinny? <laughs> um, but the majority of women and men are not skinny, but they buy fashion. So I don't understand why we have this culture of having to have a young skinny woman. I'm not insulting them because they're wonderful. Young skinny women are beautiful. But there's a lot of women that aren't like that. And, but they still buy the fashion. So I can't understand why you wouldn't have different people on the catwalk where, you know, every woman can look and every man and say, oh, I can see myself wearing that. So yeah. this, you know, this, this is quite a fundamental issue. I have no idea if I'm even going to change it, but I'm going to try. Yeah. For me, I uh, agree for, with me you. Yeah. <laughs> for me, Miss Deborah and John, I think uh, in fashion, I think there's no, um, uh, the size, the body size is not um, an issue. An because issue. We, we are all wearing clothes. So yeah, everyone can... Uh, do the catwalk, right? <laughs> and now fashion is diversity. Mm -hmm. uh, so which means that everyone can can walk in the runway. So it, it's not just only the model model, but yeah. everyone have the opportunity to really walk on the, on the runway. So I think uh, those um, 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 uh, fashion shows who, who, who showcase the the different sizes of women really appreciate them because they're giving them opportunity. opportunity. Because like me, mm -hmm. I'd love to have those ladies uh, in different sizes, in different ages, because they would um, see themselves like if I'm an audience and I see myself and at my age, oh, that if that um, clothes fit him or her, so that would fit me as well because yeah. we have mm -hmm. the same age, we have the same body and structure. Unlike if I saw them in a skinny model, then uh, you know I don't want you know to waste my time watching them because I'm not, I cannot even relate to their sizes, right? Yeah, and uh, that is uh, one thing that uh, uh, happening right now, John. Because uh, one time I saw a, a billboard. Uh, it's a plus size women wearing a famous brand. So I think uh, it changes now. Uh, the outlook, uh, I mean, uh, the way uh, we treat people. So it's time. It's time for us to, you know, to see the reality that everyone can wear uh, clothes. Yeah. I think we really need to wake up, and you know, I it's having spent such a long time in the fashion industry. 
every time a designer um, displays their fashion, you know, on the catwalk, they are size zero to size eight. You know, these women are very, very small. And don't get me wrong, when I was younger, I was really quite, quite skinny. You know, I, I actually suffered an eating disorder because I think, you know, this is a whole new story. But, you know, so many women now are pressurized to feel like they have to be like, you know, it, it's always been this way. They feel like they have to fit into this, you know, this glamorous, whatever it is, the model that they see on the catwalk and they see in social media. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that it really isn't the reality. And this is why, you know, so many plastic surgeons, you know, all of this, the surge of all of this over the years, because women now can just go and have whatever they want done to their bodies. But it's a shame that we've had to get there. You know, it's a shame that the catwalk didn't embrace or hadn't over the past years embraced, you know, the bigger woman, the older woman, the big boobed woman, because of course, if you're wearing a size zero to eight, you would be like a clothes horse, we call it, completely flat. You wouldn't have any shape because these, these dresses are, you know, they're tiny. Um, and I think it's very hard to relate and, and to, you know, to look at somebody and say, well, okay, I'm going to look good in that because it's going to make you critical. You know, you're going to look and you'll go, well, actually, you know, I'm too fat for that. Or I've got a big bum or I've got too, my boobs are too big. And, you know, this is the whole thing about the industry. And it has changed over the years. You know, we've got a lot of plus size now. We've got plus size pageants. We've got plus size models. I've been involved quite a lot in some charity uh, fashion shows where they've had uh, disabled um, uh, people they've had like you know the, the um, tiny the d d dwarf models and they've integrated all of this and I love it and you know they had someone in a wheelchair and this is this is very much because why should we exclude all of these people you know these these people buy fashion um, and they're human beings so I think we still have a, a, a long way to go and I don't think that uh, social media is helping it, you know, like Instagram and, you know, you look at your iconic women on Instagram and you want to be like them, you know, and my nose is too big and my lips aren't big enough, and my, my, you know, boobs aren't big enough. And now I can go and have that done, you see. So before, in my day, you couldn't have anything done. I'm, everything I have is real. But if I wanted something fake now, I could just book it and go. So, yeah. But I have a question. Are you in favor of uh, what they call oh, that? Enhance <laughs> no, no, enhancement. Enhancement. Am I? Of course. I, the thing is, you know, if you're safe and if you're realistic about something, now, I haven't had anything done, but I would, I would quite like to have something done to my neck. Um, I would, you know. Uh, but the actual fear of it outweighs having it done because it's not so bad that I'm that desperate. But I think that the problem that we have now, I run the Angel Academy of Teaching and Training. It's a beauty school. And over the years, we founded it in 2003. And over the years, the difference for young girls is, is disturbing. And I mean, I, how can I even tell you? The girls that come now, it's quite natural for them to have had fillers. It's natural for them as a young girl to have had Botox. It's natural for them to have had lip fillers. They've all got breast implants. And you have to look at what pressure now uh, women and men in society feel like they are under, but also that all of this is available for them. So they can literally just go and get anything. You know, there's another one, which a lot of my students have, which is a Brazilian butt lift. You know where they have the Brazilian bottom? Right. That's, a, that's a, another one that so many of my students come in. And, you know, it's dangerous. They could actually, the Brazilian butt lift, lots of people were dying from it. Um, so I think we need to be realistic and we need to realise the pressure that young girls and boys are under these days to feel like they fit in. Also in favour of Photoshop and uh, 
filter. <laughs> you are in hot seat. <laughs> because because that's like, cheaper. That's, that's a cheaper why I like one. I can't that's Photoshop it. myself. <laughs> <laughs> that's cheaper than you know that's doing. Cheaper than and <laughs> Yeah, and it's wonderful, isn't it? Because you know you can, and again, there's always good and bad in everything. I like to see the positive in it. Um, and yeah, we all want to look our best, don't we? None of us want to look like we're wrinkly and you know sagging and all of this business. But so photo shoot, so Photoshop is fantastic. Um, you know, you just do a little bit of that. And it's wonderful. Um, but then, you know, that's an illusion. That's not the reality. And of course, when you appear, you are real like this. So it can't take away from who you really are. Um, I think it could just enhance it. <laughs> that was a funny question. <laughs> <laughs> so we should be thankful on the digital, you know, yeah. time that we have now because yeah. we can really, the technology yeah, yeah we can really enhance ourselves without even um you know using any um surgery <laughs> <laughs> instant yeah instant <laughs> and pretend and then you could go and meet a man and he sees through you and he's like oh <laughs> so there's negatives and positives about doing this you know you also have to be real don't you because somebody's gonna see you <laughs> and I love I love your picture behind you. I love that one. Yeah, that very... poster behind you. That mm -hmm. you're so you're so gorgeous and glamorous. Beautiful. Yeah. Magazine um, and this one as well. And mm -hmm. um, I want to think if they're photoshopped. Um, they they probably are. And <laughs> because for magazines, most of the magazines will edit. Um, but I don't want to look like a doll and I don't want to look like I'm 30. You know, I'm 54 and I'm happy. I don't want to be younger. Um, yes, I want the best, you know, to look the best. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I don't want to be edited to look like a 30-year-old because, of course, I'm never going to be. You know, that's not who I am and that's not where uh, I stand. Yeah. You, know, you want to, for me... I'm in my 50s. Mm. I have, you know, and I tell everybody this because I'm not ashamed of it and I want to be an ambassador for women, you know, for older women. So that's why mm. I tell everybody. People say, oh, you shouldn't tell people your age. I want to tell people my age. I don't have a stigma. I don't have a problem with that at all. Um, I still have my teeth and I still have my hair. Um, but, you know, I, my, my skin, you know, the 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 elasticity, everything of the body as you get older, is about embracing that. Embracing, yeah. Uh, uh, uh. Embracing that. You know, I know in my 20s, maybe I didn't have lines like this, but I'm happy. And, and I want to be, I don't want lines like this because I want to have my expression lines that show my experience in life. And the real you, yeah, the real you. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, Miss Deborah, I have a question with your books. With all those seven books, do you have favorite uh, books from there, and why? Yeah, it's the Bubble Diaries. Wow, the recent one. <laughs> yeah. It's my favorite. Model. What's the title? Diaries. Model yeah. Diaries. Model Diaries. Yeah. So, so that, why not? Yeah, why story. not invite? Why not invite our viewers to uh, where we can buy your book? Yeah, and how much? So, Model Diaries UK is um, available on the international platform um, of Amazon. So you can go onto Amazon and put in Deborah, which is the old spelling D E B O R. A-H, Deborah, space J, space Kelly. This comes upside down, doesn't it, when I show you, of course. Um, it, it was um, due for release in the bookshops, but because of COVID, they haven't been open. So, so you can literally buy this. This is available in the Philippines. It's available uh, internationally. Um, 
And next month, what I'm doing is uh, I'm launching the um, Kindle version because that will allow you to, um, I think you can buy it, you know, or you can, you can download it very cheaply and you can share it. If you're members, you can share it for free. So I wanted to make it available to everybody who were able to pay and who weren't able to pay, you know, to offer it to everyone of every budget. Um, and I'm also going to launch um, a, a calendar um, off of the back of it as well. But it's, I've been blown away by the success. You know, I, I can't say it's, for me, this is sounding awful because I should say it's the best book in the world, but it isn't. You know, it's, it's come up with an idea to bring women and men together during COVID to have fashion shoots, to tell us about their lives, about COVID, about cultural diversity, about racism, uh, about their lives. And there's diaries um, that share some, you know, important information about how people have struggled during COVID. And I sort of tied that all up with this most lovely book um, with designers, you know, where I made people look pretty and every age, every colour, every creed. And that's what women, actually men as well, don't you want to look lovely? You know, we dress you up and for that short period of time, you feel wonderful. And I think that's really important because COVID is, you know, so many people have suffered from mental health and they've lost their identity and they've had no reason to have to leave the house. So, you know, so it was just one of those things. And it became number one bestseller. Um, and yeah, I'm thrilled. And the publicity that I've received from it has been incredible. When the lockdown finishes, you two, I'm gonna invite you both, and you can come and stay here, I've got a spare room, um, to uh, the UK and we're gonna do a book launch. Um, and it's gonna be a big fashion show. Um, and I'll have a bit like my uh, celebrity birthday bash last year. We'll have the same thing. We'll have lots of singers and it'll be all different cultures. And yeah, so we can do that. But we just don't know when everything's going to happen, you know, when everything's going to go back to normal. Normal, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we are looking forward yeah, to attend yeah. our book, <laughs> a grand book launching. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I'm excited as well to have a copy of that because, you know, it's very intriguing. What are the model diaries during the lockdown? <laughs> yeah. So I think everyone can relate in that. Yeah. <laughs> so it's not just about the story of Deborah. It's all about the people Ooh. involved in the fashion industry, right. in the event industry, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Very little about me. I, I published it. I did, you know, quite a lot of the makeup in it. I designed the shoots. I got the designers. I organized everything. I got my photographers. Um, but it's about everybody else. Yeah. So yeah. I published it. It's, it's got, you know... It's so how do you come up with that story, diaries? Uh, did mm -hmm. you, um, you talk to the designers? Yeah. Did you talk to all the models, models? How they're coping up and how they're, you know, experiencing those situations like in this time? Well, I think because I've always been um, working on the stage, with, you know, for charities. So I'm an ambassador uh, for a lot of my... Uh, sorry, minority charities, and I've won, I don't know, it's about 85 awards, um, so I'm recognised a lot in the industry, and so it was a natural progression for me. I, I did, um, it, I launched the Celebrity uh, Skincare range, it's my, my own product range, uh, last year, and I did a, uh, what's called the Celebrity Birthday Bash, and I invited, I had table of film directors, I had a table of charity ambassadors, and you know, I brought all of that into the kind of mix, because I'm not really that comfortable about being successful without bringing people into that success. I always like to take people with me. I always think it's so much nicer when you can share your success with other yeah. people. Um, so I, what I did, it was a natural progression. I just contacted some of the, um, they are actors, actresses, mm -hmm. entrepreneurs, a film, couple of uh, film uh, people, um, a, a adult, uh, sorry, a mature model, mature. Uh, along with myself, uh, African, Afro-Caribbean, Asian, and I mix them all up. 
I said to the designers, you know, how do you feel about that? Do you feel happy about putting Asian designs on all of these different people? So you're going to have like a Russian, you're going to have an African, you're going to have a Asian, the, yeah. Are you happy about that? And they said, yes, because we feel the same about the statement that you're making. And I said, okay, so let's do a shoot. So, you know, we had uh, an Asian uh, bridal shoot um, with designers and we had, you know, Polish lady, a Lithuanian lady, an African, and they were all wearing sari and sarong. And so it was about mixing up cultures mm -hmm. and saying, hey, just because I'm here doesn't mean that I can't wear your from the Philippines, doesn't mean I can't wear your cultural dress. I would like to wear your cultural dress. Wow, you thank you. <laughs> I would, because I would love to embrace culture and to and to be part of that as well because yeah. why wouldn't you the world is such an awesome place yes yeah. culture it's just fantastic why wouldn't you want to embrace it and and wear it and be part of that be proud yeah and mm. also another question miss deborah uh, do you have any plans of releasing a book uh, about your beauty secrets because you know uh, yeah <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't age at all. So, you know, maybe you can uh, also write a book and uh, um, write your secrets about uh, how to maintain your, you know, your beauty, your skin, yeah, about, uh, all yeah, about yeah. beauty, yeah. Thank you. I think if my book was written, it would be about not going to cosmetic surgery, but trying to do things naturally. Because I just think that the whole of the pressure now for society, you know, you can see I can still move, right? Because I, have, <laughs> I still have these lines. Yeah, I haven't had. Them you can that. touch your nose. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think, yeah, it's about trying to celebrate your beauty. Having said all of that, right? I do understand, you know, because I'm a, I'm a woman of age. I understand that. I might want to make the mess, most of my beauty, but I don't want people to be obsessed by it. So I yeah. think there's so many tips. You're right, actually. Um, in 1990, I'm trying to remember now, 1999, I think it was, I did a beauty show um, and it was basically secret tips about how to do things. So, you know, there will be tips about what you could do to your skin. The girls in the early days, before we had the Botox and the fillers and all of this business, she used to sellotape, all right? Jilly Johnson, this very, very well-known older model, she used to sellotape here. And she used to sellotape her brows so that she couldn't use them in expression. So she would stop using them because she sellotaped. She would just stop using those like this, right? Oh. <laughs> like this, I talked about this before. You can, a lot of the news readers used to use sellotape at the back here to sellotape their necks. And, you know, so there's all these tricks to the trade and stuff like that, that we can use, don't resort to surgery, um, which may be healthier, you know, in the long run, because you don't know the longer effects. Yeah. Happening years to come, if you keep, you know, shoving stuff into you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, we learn a lot, you know, we learn a lot from this episode, and I yeah. think, Maybe we can have another uh, part two for your beauty secrets. <laughs> yeah. I love all those tricks. <laughs> yeah. And station exercises for both of you as well. You know, these are a big part of what people don't do. They go to the gym and they exercise, right? Yeah, they don't it's more than... Mm -hmm. They exercise every other part of their body, but not their face. So facial exercises, I know it sounds crazy, but they work. You know, in it's my- It's important, yeah, facial exercise. Yes, in my, <laughs> um, in my beautiful school, I have a machine that exercises the face, right, like this, yeah. <laughs> it makes a difference. But make sure you have an alcohol while <laughs> touching your face. I have alcohol, the Mediterranean alcohol. Yeah. So especially especially in the morning. Yeah, in the morning. 
<laughs> because when when I was young, my, like my my mom told me to like massage her nose. <laughs> But I forgot. But I but forgot. It didn't yeah. work. But it didn't work. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> good advice. You see? Mom's yeah. advice. Yeah. Maybe I can just. <laughs> oh my God. This is really you know, an amazing. You know, Bench uh, keep on you know, pushing his nose, but it didn't work. <laughs> yeah, it didn't work. So maybe I need. Um, Surgery. <laughs> I think you didn't do it enough. I think you just need to keep doing it. Because exercise... Yeah, keep on doing it. It's okay. It's so guys, listen, ha. Huh? You, you have to uh, keep doing... <laughs> or but, yeah. if you can't do anything, just embrace what you have. Just embrace <laughs> what we have, yeah. Mm. yeah. That's key, isn't it? That's yeah. Key your beauty shines through as well you know in this industry <laughs> okay miss deborah we're, we learn a lot from you in this episode and we're so thankful and so glad that you grace the show and you um yeah. grant our um invitation to join us tonight so for your message to our viewers, we just want, you know, to, if you want to share something to our viewers. I'm so thrilled to be part of this and thank you so much. And, you know, um, it's just a message really to leave for everybody. Um, and that is that everyone, everyone is unique. There is no other like you. And we need to understand, well, they do sometimes say spiritually, of course, that you have a double somewhere, but I've never met one. Um, but we need to, you know, we need to embrace who we really are. So my message really to everybody is thank you so much. Uh, and thank you so much to John and thank you so much to Bench. Uh, it's been amazing. Thank you. And I can't wait to come to the Philippines. Um, and yeah, you're all beautiful. Thank you. Wow, thank you so much, Miss Deborah.